There are certain kinds of travel that are handled very, very effectively by public transit, and it's absolutely a critical part of the whole system. But it doesn't handle the whole array of kinds of trips in metropolitan areas. The biggest growth in peak period trips has not been more people going to and from work. It's been that you have two worker households where the workers are latching on more and more errands, what we call sort of uh, chain trips into tours. So the, 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 the working mom leaves, leaves home, goes to the daycare center, then drops cleaning off at, at the cleaners, goes by the bank, then goes to, uh, goes to work. On the way home, stops by, picks up the, the child, picks up the takeout Thai food, and comes home. Those kinds of trips are hard to handle on public transit. For someone who's traveling just from, say, a work center and back, it can work extremely effectively. There are also other kinds of, of, of trips that are needed for midday deviations, all of which, even when people are very enthusiastic about using public transit, and more and more we see people will take transit a few days a week, they may bike sometimes, but there are times when cars are necessary. And those kinds of trips are not able to be handled effectively by traditional fixed route public transit systems. And because of that, we see in very transit rich areas, we'll see a drop in total uh, trips and miles that are made in private vehicles. But we're talking about from 92% of trips down to 84% of trips. And that's a significant progress. And it means that over the, over the whole system, we can see lots of benefit. But we're not seeing it drop from 92% of trips down to 14% of trips. We don't see that kind of a drop. And because of that, we tend to have a lot of movement onto our street system and onto the freeways.